I, I tend to agree with you. Um, I was thinking yesterday before this doubleheader started, all right, you know, the Mets have kind of kept it above water. They've, they've stayed relevant. They're still in second place in the, uh, the National League East, and they're only five games out. And there's a long, long way to go, as we know. We keep, we'll, we'll keep saying that over and over and over again until we get to August. But, you know, here, here's the thing. You know, he, is, he was so off yesterday and looked so bad that it is concerning and it's concerning that you know we, you, you sign the guy and he gets suspended for 10 games uh he he, he gets hurt uh he gets lit up uh, you know by uh, the Braves and the Padres uh you go back to last year this has been an unmitigated I don't say disaster I guess I have to say disaster it's been very very deflating I should say and the other thing too I would just say like this is a guy that's going to be a bona fide Hulk, first ballot Hall of Famer He's got all these, you know, Cy Youngs and everything else. And it goes to show you, you got to be careful about what you're spending your money on. And I know that this is May. I, I hope I'm not saying the same thing come August. I really do. Yeah, we had Ron Darling on right before opening day, and I asked him, should we be concerned about Max Scherzer? He said that's the one guy that you wouldn't be concerned about because of how hard he works and the bulldog mm -hmm. mentality and all of these things. But, you know, maybe he just doesn't have it anymore. You know, at some point, these guys stop playing well. The only person that I ever saw not stop playing well was Tom Brady. He could have come back and played another year. But at some point, these guys fall off. And that could be what's happening right now. He could also figure it out. But what we've seen from him has been alarming. So I know on one hand that it only matters you know, get into the playoffs, wild card division. None of it matters uh, and, and play well at that point. However, what are the Mets if Max Scherzer is not Max Scherzer that you paid for? And then, by the way, you know, hopefully Justin Verlander turns out to be great for them. We'll get a first look at him. But that's not any sort of lock at this point. The guys spent the first month on the I.L., so if those guys aren't great, if you aren't getting the greatness that you paid for, you know, what are the Mets going to be? I mean, this team was built around those guys. So you're telling me you got two old guys at the top of the rotation and Kodai Senga, who's never gone through a Major League Baseball season. I mean, that's what you're going to roll out there uh, in the playoffs or roll out there in the most important series down the stretch in the regular season. It's it's alarming. It, it really is. And and I, I, if I'm Steve Cohen, I am um, I'm livid. I'm living about it because you're investing so much money. And I know it's his own fault and Billy Epler's fault for signing guys like this. But at the same time, the fact that it, it, it's worked out as poorly as it has to this point in the season has got to be infuriating for him. Well, I mean, you know, you're talking about what? Forty three million for Max Scherzer, right? Yep. Forty three point three million for Max Scherzer. Uh, Kodai Senga is making 15 million. It's nothing. Uh, let's see. They don't. They don't. Justin Verlander, forty-three point three million. So, you know, you're looking at what eighty-six point six million dollars for two guys, which is more than you know several payrolls in Major League Baseball right. for their entire teams. And, and the thing about it is, is that we haven't seen uh, Verlander because of this whole armpit thing. But uh, the, the the Scherzer thing. <laughs> so is, what you just said. I know the whole armpit I mean, thing. Like, the on. whole thing's an armpit right I now. Mean, it's unbelievable we're sitting we haven't seen Verlander because of the whole armpit thing and you're not even making a joke it's uh, the truth I know and I understand look there's a long season and the Yankees are going through it right now they're trying to stay above 500 and try to stay relevant and just try to hang in there yeah until your your reinforcements come back but sure is supposed to be one of your reinforcements you know maybe he'll pitch better next time but again I told you he was going to blame the long layoff. Oh. So whose fault is that? You're right. Well, his. I right. mean, for exactly. breaking the rules. I mean, and I don't want to hear any excuses at the end of this, especially when we just went through the suspension. And I know his teammates have supported him. And I know that Buck, I'm sure, privately has supported him more than publicly. But you know, a lot of people are looking at him as a guy who was bending the rules, breaking the rules, and then came out when he didn't have the same advantage and was terrible in that first start, which is something that we talked about prior to yesterday that happened to Garrett Cole when they cracked down on the spider tack and Garrett Cole was basically the poster boy for that. You know, the, the next several starts that he had after that, he was terrible until he figured it out. So hopefully Max Scherzer figures it out like Garrett Cole did, but 
You know, Garrett Cole is in his prime still. Max Scherzer is not. And I, the, the Met fans have been defending Max Scherzer when I brought this stuff up in the past when I was crushing him for his start uh, against the Padres and his start against the Braves. And then this season, his early on struggles, and they're trying to defend him. Oh, he's going to be great. And Max was better than you said last year and blah, blah. Why are you defending him? And then he's, he's done suspended. nothing he's for this team. I mean, right. like, don't, don't forget that. You're not a Tigers fan. You're not a Nationals fan. You're not a Dodgers fan where he was able to do some special things for those teams he's really done nothing for the Mets and I don't care about his post his his history with these other teams I care about what he does here uh, you know what it reminds me of Patrick Kane yes thank you I mean you know I'm, I'm still I'm not over it yet but, I understand I, mean, I, I totally understand I but, told you what was going to happen last night I told you that the Canes were going to score like six yeah goals. Kira Schmidt turns back into the pumpkin yeah, and then, yeah. No. well it's, it's because of the Canes it, right. you know the Rangers needed to do that and they didn't do that but I don't want to go down that road right now <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I really don't I mean I'm just finally getting over it but uh yeah this is what it reminds me of and I I, I want to just just kind of just kind of warn Aaron Rodgers, this is what happens. I know he knows, and I think he's going to be better. But the thing is, is that, you know, you come here, New York is known for signing guys late in their career, whether it be the Mets, the Knicks, the Rangers, the, the Yankees, whatever. And we've seen guys come through here left and right late in their careers and just completely crap the bed yep. and get completely lit up by the fan base. It was kind of interesting, and I'll go back to hockey for just one second. So Gerard Gallant gave his, you know, his end-of-season press conference yesterday, and he was defending himself, and I probably would defend myself if I had two 100-point back-to-back seasons. That mm-hmm. don't impress me much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the point. Yeah. It's like, what have you done for us lately, and what is the latest taste in our mouth? Yeah. In regard to what we just witnessed. Yeah, when it was a series where you're clearly out coached, too. I mean, that's a big problem. Yeah, I know. I mean, so I understand where Gerard's coming from because I would want to defend my 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 overall record. I would want to defend. Mm-hmm. Of course I would. I'd be like, wait a minute, you know, it's not like, you know, we got 80 points here. I mean, sure. you know, we've had one of the best teams in the last two years in the league. I mean, and and of course, then he uses Boston as an as an example and you know, he uses the avalanche as an example, yeah. you know, that, you know, one team had the president's trophy as the most points. They went out in the first round and the defending Stanley Cup championship uh, champions went out in the first round. But the point being, if you come here, you are going to go under the microscope. And this is what they talk about being in New York is all about. Yeah, especially when the team has expectations and we have so many teams with expectations right now. It's almost like we can't have everything going well at the same time. You know, the Jets and Giants are really relevant. Uh, You expect the Jets to have a monster season. The Giants go to the divisional round. You have all the winter teams making it into the playoffs for the first time since 1994. All these things that have gone on well. So it's almost like someone has to fall off. And right now it's it's the Mets and Yankees. And the Mets have massive, massive, Massive expectations. You know, the highest payroll in baseball by a lot. 101 wins last year that all the Mets fans want to hang their hat on when it means nothing when you get knocked out by the uh, Padres in the first round. But they're very high expectations. The amazing thing is, like, the Mets are paying two guys the most they've ever made Mm -hmm. in a season. Yeah. I mean, and they haven't really done anything for the Mets. No, they have not. I mean, there was a couple of, you know, Max Scherzer had a few, you know, Good starts last it wasn't year. Like there was Max stretch. Scherzer he was, was good. Thinking, uh, like I, you know, Aaron Rodgers isn't taking what he nearly should be taking or could be taking. Right. These guys are taking the full max amount of money guaranteed. Of course. Boom. Yeah. I mean, and, and Steve Cohen thought that, and Billy Epler thought that's the way you're going to be able to build this team, and that's how you're going to win is is with these guys. And losing Jacob Degrom was something that. Yeah, you know, Steve Cohen, I guess, was okay with because he went out and got Justin Verlander, and he really didn't go the extra mile for Degrom. And Degrom's back on the IL, and we were kind of sick of his stuff anyway because he didn't stay healthy. More, but more to be like short-term, flexible money spent as opposed to long-term, you know, questionable yeah, money spent. Sure, and and I just now we haven't seen Verlander, and that's a problem. But I just I I hope that he gives you another Cy Young like effort because oh. then I could start believing that this team has a shot because. You know, the Braves came back in a 101 season for the Mets, still won the division. And right now they're five games ahead of the Mets and look a hell of a lot better. Yeah, but why can't that change? I mean, it can. Of I mean, course of course it can. it can. I mean, I know you're frustrated this morning. We all are. You wake up after 
you thinking, okay, we got a doubleheader here against the worst team in baseball. Maybe, you know, we win these two games. You know, who knows? Like, you know, and even Max Scherzer said this before the start. You know, now that we're healthy and now that we're ready to roll and now that we got our guys back. Well, yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> just it's just it was a pathetic day. It, it really was. And if this team goes on some sort of run, maybe we'll look back at this and say, you know, that was a low point for them. And now they're playing a hell of a lot better. I just I have concerns when I'm projecting forward about how good this team can be. And I'm sure that Phillies fans were saying the same thing last year with when they were firing Joe Girardi and the team got off to a terrible start and how good are they and all those things. So it, it can change over the course of a season. I just, yeah, if they are built around these two guys being great and Scherzer and Verlander. And right now, one guy is a rumor that we're finally going to see today. And the other guy is stunk. So like, who's stepping up? Is it Joey Lucchese? Is it Tyler McGill? Is it Kodai Senga in his first year where he's never pitched this much? Is it David Peterson? Like, who's going to step up and pick up the slack if those two guys can't get it done? Shohei Otani. Yeah, if you get him at the trade deadline, we're going to have to trade away, you know, every single prospect that you have in the system and probably guys off the major league roster as well. Uh, and, and then maybe not get a guarantee that he's going to sign. So I, I don't know. I mean, that that's Steve Cohen's going to go all in on that. I think we know that, especially after what happened with Carlos Correa. But I don't know if that happens this season. I don't know if it happens at the trade deadline or it's an offseason thing. But, you know, when you have like it's not like there's there's pipeline guys coming up, too, that are going to go and save the Mets at this point. I mean, the, the window is now. This is the time you have to win when you felt like you, you still had something left with Scherzer and Verlander. So I just if they if they turn it around and make the playoffs and are great and go on some sort of run and they're they're built for it, I would not be surprised. Of course, I would not be surprised. But I just after the way things ended last year and this start, it just it pisses me off. I got to be honest well, with you. Of course, I well, it's bad. Plus, they get swept in a doubleheader. Yeah, by one of the worst teams in baseball in one of the dreariest, most uninspiring environments I've ever seen in pro sports. I, it was just like, what is going on? I mean, this team stinks. You're playing one of the worst teams in baseball. It's like 48 degrees and, and raining. And I'm watching Joey Lucchese get lit up. And then Max Scherzer get lit up at night. It's like, well, well, like this just sucks. It's not supposed to be like this, man. We're not yeah. supposed to worry about this well, stuff this well, early. It is, you know, it's, 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 a, it's May 4th. Yeah. May the 4th be with you. Eddie. Yes. Did you wear it? Yes, he does. He's got a yes, Star of course, Wars shirt 100%, on. 100% he does. I want to make sure. Yes. He understands. And then, of course, today the... Uh, That's the, the force. Be with you, right? <laughs> Never saw a Star Wars movie. Star Trek, Star Wars. I can't even tell them apart. Special day for Eddie Scazzeri today. Uh, may the fourth be with you. Uh, nanu, nanu, or whatever you do. Uh, all right. Uh, and then Brian Cashman <laughs> yesterday... He, of course, comes out and blames the injuries for what's going on, which is something that I predicted and said that I'm not going to take that excuse because... Why, you have to, don't no, you? No, 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 I don't. I'll tell oh, you why. Okay, okay. okay you okay. traded for Frankie Montas, who yes. was already hurt. You brought in Carlos Rodon for a bunch of money who's got a long injury history. You traded for Harrison Bader, who was hurt and didn't even come and contribute until later in the season. Now, he was great, but still. You kept Severino on this roster, who has always been hurt. John Carlos Stanton, every single year, has six weeks, two months with some sort of soft tissue injury. And now we're supposed to be surprised that all these guys are hurt? I mean, you brought this 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 mash unit in, and we everybody's hurt right again. We suck right now. Yes, we suck right now. And so Aaron Judge is the only one, and I understand he's the biggest one, but he's the and he's had, he had a great season of staying healthy last year, but he's had his own injury history. But he's the only one where that was sort of flukish and that flop going into third base, and he ended up getting hurt. That's the only one I want to hear as an excuse. Everybody else, I mean, can't be surprised. You're the ones who assembled these guys, these unreliable guys. <laughs> You're the guy who brought them in. So, and hopefully Harrison Bader's okay with that collision yesterday. But it's just like the, the, he's sitting well with this isn't the team we assembled. Yeah, of course it isn't. I mean, Josh Donaldson is another one. He shouldn't even be here. You can't tell me that, that that's like Josh Donaldson being out is a problem for you. You know, I feel like when you get on one of these rants and you're looking at me. Yes. I feel like you're yelling at me. I don't know why. I just feel that way. I feel like, like you're looking at me. 
and you're screaming you're the at me. the only one that's here. No, I mean, you got millions you know? of people out there listening. No, I you. understand, but you're the only one who's physically here. Well, those two guys are here. Why don't you look at Alan Eddie when you're yeah, because of that, Because you're the one who's going to respond. They're not going to respond. You I know? Know, so I'm trying on the other to, side of the glass. Try, you know, I'm trying to, you know, have a, uh, you know, the back and forth and look at you and engage. You know what I'm saying? You want me to just look straight forward or look down at the ground? You I know? mean, I, I, I thought you'd say something about my sweatshirt today, but you didn't say anything about my sweatshirt. You're wearing a Bengal sweatshirt. Why would that surprise it's me? It's an you old school Bengal sweatshirt. Does I've this never... mean that you got into the ring of honor? No. Oh. What this means is that I'm going fishing today. This is a fishing sweatshirt. Oh, okay. uh, sweatshirt. All right, good. Is that, is, this is, this so is you... not scream, I'm going fishing today? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you got your uh, your jersey on that we're wearing tonight for our flag football Yeah, but game. I, have a, I have a change of clothes, and I got uh, my fishing jacket, and I actually packed my fishing boots so I don't get... Uh, fish guts all over there. Yeah, I got fishing boots too. Yeah, so I got I got a whole change of clothes. But yeah, I'm wearing the jersey. So yeah, I thought I thought you were gonna say like, hey, well, that's a cool sweatshirt because this is a throwback sweatshirt. Yeah, I, so I didn't think much old, of it. I was not I was not inspired I think at this all. Is by an old, what, I, this is like an old. I think this comes from when I played. Really, all the way back then. I think so. Wow. Maybe, maybe just after me. I don't know. Man, oh, man. It's that's... a really cool sweatshirt. So you don't. I don't remember this B being around until I got there in the mid, not late 90s. All right. So you're okay with getting slime, striped bass slime on that sweatshirt it's is what you're telling me. It's an old, comfy, like warm yeah. sweatshirt. Right. And you don't care if it and stinks like be, fish. we're going to be semen today. We are going to be semen today. We're going to be out on the sea doing semen stuff. We are going to be we're going to be doing you semen the, stuff. Uh, you got to put the bait on my hook. <laughs> sure. I mean, it depends on what we're doing. If we're you know snagging bunker, I don't know if they're going to be trolling mojos out there. I don't trolling know if we're going to be. I don't know if we're going to be jigging. Um, so, so we could be getting jiggy with it. I don't know if there's going to be like legit bait. Bait. It's not like we're throwing you know worms on the hooks. Uh, it's going to be you know tackle uh, more often than that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm assuming. That uh, Doug Wells knows what he's doing. He's going to bring some other people along and know what they're You're doing, a too. You're seaman. Yeah. There you go. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward letting to letting you it. know. I'm ready to roll. Good. That's great. And, and that's why good. I wore this sweatshirt. Because, like, just, like, feel the sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's thick. Right. It's old. It's comfy. Right. It's perfect. It's a fishing sweatshirt. Yeah, it's going to be nipply out there, too, today, you know? Nipply. Definitely nipply out there. It's going to be not, not a lot of wind, but not a lot of sun. Low 50s once we get moving on that boat. It's not going to feel great. Got a cabin on this boat? I don't know. Actually, I know nothing about the boat. Oh. <clears throat> I'm hoping I'll be going out on a dinghy. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's a dinghy. I got to look back, see if he sent me a picture back in the day of, is of this, this his boat. boat. I think it is because are we going to his house? I don't. I think we're going to his house. You're, and then you're, he's got you're a, the one that's got this whole thing like on the uh, you know like on lockdown. Not me. Uh, do, do I? Nautical seaman, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got the boat docked in the. His backyard. Oh, wow. He's got money. Yeah, my money. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified when we're dropping new content.